What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. There's been a lot of talk recently about Android handsets, especially as 4G LTE starts to make their way to phones, and coming out of CES, they are really all the rage. We've got the Atrix 4G coming out, we've got the Droid Bionic, we've got the HTC Thunderbolt, the unnamed Samsung 4G phone, all running Android, but running different skins sitting on top of Android. Each skin offers a bit of unique functionality and different UI tweaks. I thought it would be interesting to sort of put these guys um, you know, in a demonstration and show you what each one offers and the pros and cons and benefits. So when it comes time to make a decision for you for which handset's going to be best, you can make the most educated decision possible and sort of demystify uh, what each of these skins do. So let's go ahead and get started. So I figured before we look at the skins, we're going to need sort of a baseline comparison. Uh, so what I've got in front of me right now is stock Android. This is 2.3 gingerbread running on the Nexus S. This is what Android looks like in its raw form, which is actually pretty nice and a lot of people tend to prefer it. And oftentimes I tend to prefer even stock Android. So you've got an array of icons. Of course, one of the nice things about Android is that it does run widgets. So you can put little widgets running on top of it and we'll show you what those look like in different skins. Uh, we've got a panel of home screens. You've got three buttons at the bottom. You can go ahead and see what the icon tray looks like. Got a bit of a 3D uh, effect right there. The keyboard is relatively nice on stock Android. I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. We'll jump into messages real quickly. We'll go ahead and create a new message. And you can, get, you can customize this really any way you like. You can add different keyboards. You can add swipe. You can do a lot with Android. You can, again, you can sort of make it to fit your needs. Uh, and that's really where these skins come in. There's how the manufacturers thought that we might want to use the phone uh, and improve on the stock Android experience. So this is a very short overview of what stock Android looks like. Let's go ahead and bring in contender number one. Uh, let's bring in Moto Blur. All right, so the first skin we're gonna take a look at is Motorola's Moto Blur. You can tell because it's got that Moto in it. Uh, this is a skin that we've seen and are gonna continue to see on a ton of devices, including the Droid X, the Droid 2, the Droid 1, Droid 2 Global, uh, Motorola Atrix coming out, the Droid Bionic, a lot of Motorola devices. Chances are if it's a Motorola device running Android, it's going to have a version of Moto Blur on it. It does have its custom unlock sheet. We'll go ahead and unlock it. Uh, and chances are it's also going to have these three colored buttons at the bottom. Uh, there are some versions of Moto Blur that don't, uh, but the majority do. And there are three sort of custom um, buttons to make using Android a bit easier. The one on the left, of course, being your dialer, the one in the middle being your menu button, and the one on the right being contacts. Uh, you've got a little bit of few tweaks here to the dialer and stock Android, uh, but not much being done here. Uh, the icon array does look pretty standard. Uh, I should mention that there is a bit of Android fragmentation going on right now. Some devices are running older versions of Android. Uh, this particular one is running 2.1. Uh, it's truly really up to the carriers and the manufacturers to when those updates are gonna be pushed out. So some features and looks may change depending on which version of Android you are running. So go ahead and hit home. Uh, what Moto Blur does, and one of the things that it does very well, is it integrates all of your social networking into one interface. Uh, it'll pull in all of your Facebook contacts and put it into your contacts and use their pictures and all that kind of stuff that we've seen a lot of other skins do. Uh, Moto Blur does it in sort of a very colorful, almost cartoonish way. You can see what some of these Moto Blur would look like. Uh, they're very bright and very vibrant. Uh, Moto Blur also offers um, offline sort of cloud functionality. So you sign up for a Moto Blur account and automatically sync all of your information. If you ever have to change phones or you lose your phone or it gets stolen, you sign into a new account, all your information is going to be there. Uh, as I'm scrolling, you can see what those buttons look like across the bottom, uh, showing each of the, I believe, seven home screens. Uh, you can see different dots array uh, are showing up. and You can pick and jump to whichever one you like. I'm going to go ahead and show you what some of the widget choices are on here. I could get into more detail on each skin, but this will turn into probably a 40-minute Odyssey video. So I'm going to breeze over some of the features and functionality and just talk about sort of the general uh, UI looks. If you want to see something in particular with one of these skins, I'll leave a comment down below and I'll make an individual video going over each. So here are the Motorola widgets. You can see that there are quite a bit and that bright color mentality really uh, comes through. Uh, Moto Blur does add a lot of functionality. It's probably not my favorite from an aesthetic standpoint, uh, but from a functionality standpoint, it is very good. Uh, Motorola does actually offer a custom keyboard here. 
on modem board. I'll show you what that looks like very quickly. You jump at the text message. New message here. Of course, it's got an accelerometer as well. Uh, so a little bit different than the stock keyboard we saw on the Nexus S. And the Nexus S does have a different keyboard than most stock Android devices. It's currently the only Android 2.3 device. So sort of furthering the fragmentation and differences uh, you've got between Gingerbread and previous builds of Android. So we'll go ahead and hit the home button. And that's actually another thing to bring up. Uh, Moto Blur does have a different array of uh, icons across the bottom. Uh, some Moto Blur devices will only have three. Some will have four, the fourth being a search button. Your menu button here is a bit different on Moto Blur. It's got sort of that four boxes. Home and back are the same. Certainly as the trends now, uh, most phones are going to have capacitive buttons across the bottom. All right, so this is a quick look at Moto Blur. Let's go ahead and jump into the next skin, which is going to be Samsung's own TouchWiz. All right, so here is TouchWiz and all of its TouchWizzy glory. Uh, we're gonna do this demonstration on the Epic 4G for Sprint, uh, but TouchWiz is what you're going to see on all of the Samsung Galaxy S series of devices, uh, one of the most popular series of Android phones ever. Uh, as well as the Galaxy Tab and Samsung's upcoming 4G devices as well. Uh, so things are a bit different here. Let's actually start with the lock screen, uh, which looks a bit different. It's going to give you a bit more notification information as well. So go ahead and lock the device and unlock it. Each Galaxy S phone has a different unlock screen, uh, but the moral here is the same. You move something somewhere else and you get all of your sort of standard information will show up there. Uh, so TouchWiz starts with four icons that are docked across the bottom. Then you can put whatever icons you like on the top above it. As you go ahead and move screens, uh, as opposed to modal blurs, sort of dots on the bottom, uh, you've got dots across the top. You hopefully you can see right there, uh, and they move. Actually, the big one moves uh, as you go ahead and scroll through. Uh, the icons here are shown very differently. If you look at the application tray. Uh, they're all encapsulated in their own little squares and the scrolling instead of being vertical is horizontal. Nothing drastic, but it is sort of a bit of a difference. Uh, the phone is uh, skinned quite a bit as well. Let me go ahead and push this off to the side so I don't reveal any phone numbers. We can see that this looks mo um, noticeably different than what we saw previously with Moto Blur, sort of one example of the skin here. Uh, go ahead and hit home, which I think that's the home button. We now have four buttons across the bottom, sort of standard Android. You notice that the menu button is different than what we saw in the past. If I go ahead and get it to light up, uh, there it is. You can see it's not that sort of four squares that we saw before. It's sort of standard Android menu button. So we'll go ahead and jump back home and take a look at some of the widgets that we're going to get here. Uh, TouchWiz does a lot in the widgetized department as well. Go ahead and see what all of your choices are here. And there's quite a bit. Uh, AccuWeather Clock, Buddies Now, and the Buddies Now sort of thing. Uh, we'll bring in all of your contacts as well, uh, similar to Moto Blur. And you're going to find that's a common theme uh, amongst mo most or really all of the Android skins. So we'll go ahead and jump back here. And we continue the tour. Let's go ahead and take a look at the keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and push this off to the side for just one minute and show you what the keyboard is going to look like here. Because uh, the keyboard is definitely different. Uh, this is more of a stock Android keyboard, uh, Android 2.2. Uh, however, it does ship with something called Swipe. Oh, it's a completely different keyboard. Never have to lift up your finger uh, to do some typing. So you're going to get a very sort of different uh, typing experience. Uh, of course, this particular device also has a slide out QWERTY keyboard, uh, but that's something that's unique to this particular phone and isn't representative of TouchWiz as a whole. So go ahead and hit home. And we'll go ahead and go back out. You can see what some of these widgets look like. They are very bright and colorful as well. I found them to be a bit more subdued though, subdued. Uh, I should say, as opposed to Moto Blur. I can see they make the icons sort of bright and colorful too uh, up top there. So that was a very short and quick overview of TouchWiz. Next, let's go ahead and look at HTC Sense. All right, so next and last up in our skin tour is the HTC Aria. Uh, and this is, of course, going to be demonstrating HTC Sense. Go ahead and show you what the unlock screen looks like and slide this down. I should mention that there is a newer version of HTC Sense available. You can see some of the cool weather stuff going on right there. Uh, available on the Desire HD, which is actually not released in the US, so I don't have it here to demonstrate. Uh, one of the key differences you're going to see on the Desire HD's version of HTC Sense is the ability to tie in with HTCSense.com, uh, which is going to let you download custom skins. It'll change how these icons at the bottom look. 
um, that you sort of further customize your device. And there's an even newer version coming out, which we saw demonstrated at CES on the HTC Thunderbolt, which is a 4G LTE device coming to Verizon Wireless sometime this year. Um, it'll probably make its way to other HTC devices. But enough of what's coming and what might be available, let's talk about what you're going to get available now with HTC Sense, which is really one of the first UI skins that we've seen uh, permeate the marketplace. We actually first saw HTC Sense, which was previously called Sense UI, on the old Windows Mobile. It was actually Windows Mobile, I think maybe 6 or 6.5, uh, was the first that had a version of HTC Sense. Uh, we sort of saw that transition over to Android, and sort of once they moved over to Android, it's really come to its own uh, as one of the premier, my actually preferred, uh, Android skin. So you've got three buttons across the bottom, again, remembering sort of that Android cuts and uh, fragmentation. These icons may look a little bit different depending on what device you're using. So go ahead and go back to the home button. And again, you've got the four sort of standard buttons, although instead of uh, an icon representing menu, this particular one actually says menu. It's gonna depend on which device you are running. So HTC Sense has a cool new fe couple new cool features. You saw that clouds sort of swarm through here. It's got some 3D weather action. Uh, you can jump from screen to screen like all the Android uh, skins we've seen by swiping across. And there's a little indicator at the bottom right above now phone and those swooping icons. You can see where it is. But you can also, if you do a little pinch action, go ahead and see if it'll work. There we go. Uh, you can go ahead and jump to whatever home screen you choose, and you can move those around uh, and do some tweaks. So you can see my battery's almost dead. Go and take a look at some of the custom skins and custom widgets that you're going to get in HTC Sense. Uh, and HTC is always adding quite a bit more, so your device may have different widgets uh, than what we have right here. Let's go ahead and check a look at widgets. So you can get more HTC widgets. One of the cool things, you can go ahead and download a lot more. Uh, I find these to look a little bit more professional. They're less colorful and less bright, uh, perhaps geared to maybe an older audience, uh, but they all are very, very, very functional. So go ahead and go back. This will also pull in and combine all of your social media and integrate your Facebook contacts with your contacts, so use their pictures uh, and the rest. So this does have a custom keyboard. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Go ahead and jump into new message. Tap for new message, and there is what HTC's keyboard looks like. And certainly you can put in your own keyboard if you like. Uh, this is primarily what you're gonna see with HTC. Now they've taken the skinning probably a few steps farther uh, than Motorola and Samsung have. Uh, even things like the menu and the settings uh, have also been skinned. You can see that goes through uh, even deeper. And you go through sort of two or three steps and you still see uh, sort of little notices uh, that sense UI is there and that you're not running stock Android. It's probably a deeper skin that we've had with the other two. Uh, one of its hallmarks is the sort of big clock with the weather integrated into it. Uh, we've seen that imitated on a few other uh, devices. In fact, you can actually download that widget uh, from the Android Marketplace. At least you could, it may have been removed. Uh, it really has become very well known. Of course, all these skins support multi-touch browsers uh, and they all sort of take advantage of the WebKit-based functionality uh, that Android has in its browsing system. Uh, it's got a great Twitter functionality called Peep, but of course you can download any Twitter application you want from the ever-growing and increasingly awesome Android Marketplace. So this has been sort of, again, a short overview here of HTC Sense. I hope you guys enjoyed um, and got a sense of what the different skins were going to look like as maybe you see what's best for you. So we took a look at Moto Blur, we took a look at TouchWiz, and we took a look at HTC Sense. Uh, they all offer something unique and they all bring something kind of fun to the table. There's a lot of really interesting things you can do with each skin and they all have a very unique look and feel. Um, all the devices that are going to offer these um, bring a ton to the table, but the most notable thing they bring to the table is what they have in common, Android, uh, which is an awesome operating system which can let you tweak and customize it to best suit your needs. Uh, for me, I prefer HTC Sense but I've used plenty of TouchWiz devices and plenty of Moto Blur devices, and they all are really good, and I'd be happy to use any of the three. So guys, which do you prefer? Any skin that you like? Do you prefer Android naked and raw, like we saw on the Nexus S, or do you like it all gussied up and ready for the ball uh, in one of its skins? Anyway guys, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.